Hello, Tango. Welcome to Gully Classroom. This is the fourth lecture. In which chapter, sir? In the chapter Life Processes. In CBSE 10th Standard Biology, Chapter 6. Science Book, Chapter 6. Life Processes. This is the fourth lecture taken in English. This is the fourth lecture taken in English. Okay, sir. What are we going to learn in this particular lecture? In this particular lecture, we will learn about respiration. What is respiration? What is internal and external respiration? What is cellular respiration? What is the role of human respiratory system in keeping the human organism alive? In keeping the human organism alive. Can we go for the lecture? Absolutely, sir. Okay. What is respiration? Before we look at what is respiration, let us first understand that respiration is essentially catabolic in nature. Sir, what is catabolic? Catabolism is a part of metabolism. Metabolism has two parts. Anabolism and catabolism. What is metabolism? Metabolism is the sum of all activities that keep an animal alive. Metabolism is the sum of all activities, sum of all secondary functions that keep an animal alive. It has two components. One particular part is called as anabolism. All cellular activities that build molecules is anabolism. All cellular activities that break molecules is called as catabolism. I am okay, sir. I am fine with this. How is respiration breaking molecules? Respiration with the help of oxygen is burning glucose. Glucose that is obtained from digesting starch during the process of digestion. What is happening? Respiration is uh, a catabolic process. Why? It is breaking glucose. C6H2O6 formula of glucose. Oxygen is used to burn down glucose and provide energy to the human body and this is called as respiration. Process of acquiring oxygen from outside the body and using it in burning that is oxidizing digesting food. Why are you calling burning as oxidizing sir? Any burning requires oxygen. Because burning requires oxygen, any burning can simply be called as oxidation. Any oxidation can simply be called as burning. And because of this, this respiration is providing energy for all cellular needs. So what is respiration? Respiration is the process of acquiring oxygen from outside the body. Step 1. It is called as breathing. Acquiring oxygen from outside the body. Step 1. It is called as breathing. And using it to burn digested food. Step 2. It is called as respiration. And it is exothermic. It gives out a lot of heat. And this heat keeps the human body warm. Now are you able to understand why our body is always warm when we are alive? Now we are able to understand why. Once life has gone out of the body, immediately the body becomes cold. Yeah? Okay, sir. Now, what is cellular respiration, sir? This process of uh, respiration, combining of oxygen and glucose to produce energy, happens in each and every cell. Hence, it is called as cellular respiration. Cellular respiration can take three different kinds of pathways. What are the three different kinds of pathways that cellular respiration can take on? Let us study. First, glucose. What is the formula for glucose? C6H12O6. It is a 6 carbon molecule. It is broken in cytoplasm to pyruvate. What is pyruvate? Pyruvate is a 3 carbon molecule. Sir, show me the structure of pyruvate. In order to understand the structure of pyruvate, you need to first understand that carbon, atomic number 6, mass number 12, Electronic configuration is 2,4. Since it has 4 electrons in the outer motion, carbon forms 4 covalent bonds. Okay, sir. Now, tell me uh, how what is the structure of pyruvate. Structure of pyruvate is CH3 dash C double bond O, C double bond O. Let me rub this off for clarity. C double bond O dash OH. Here, check it out. Each and every place, carbon has four bonds. One, here between oxygen and carbon, there are two bonds. One, two, three, four. This carbon has four bonds. One, two, three, four. This carbon has four bonds. Sir, what about this particular carbon? Here, this 
provides one bond there are three hydrogen atoms there and the three hydrogen atoms provide the rest of the bond this is called as pyruvic acid note it down uh, this is something extra but anyway you can learn this is called as pyruvic acid in pyruvic acid this hydrogen which is electro positive will leave an electron and go off this hydrogen which is electro positive will leave an electron and go off hence it is called as pyruvate this particular structure is called as pyruvate kindly notice here that pyruvate is a three carbon molecule okay so glucose which is uh, which has six carbons c6 h2o6 breaks into pyruvate which is a three carbon molecule okay sir now what is happening this pyruvate takes three different types of pathways in one particular pathway it will not use any oxygen in one particular pathway it will use some oxygen in the last pathway it will use any amount of oxygen it will use excess of oxygen whenever oxygen is involved in respiration it is called as aerobic respiration whenever respiration is happening without oxygen it is called as anaerobic respiration okay sir okay sir let us get back to the subject in the absence of oxygen during fermentation in yeast anaerobic respiration is being done and it is producing ethanol carbon dioxide and energy it is producing ethanol carbon dioxide and energy kindly look here pyruvate has three carbon molecule two carbon molecule of pyruvate is converted into ethanol the third carbon molecule is converted into carbon dioxide in this particular pathway in the absence of oxygen during fermentation in yeast anaerobic respiration is happening to provide ethanol carbon dioxide and energy you will study more about ethanol in the chapter carbon and its compounds okay sir what about lack of oxygen sir let us say i am doing some sudden physical activity suddenly i am punching somebody suddenly i am cycling during these times sometimes our muscles cramp together our legs or hands cramp why does this kind of cramping occur okay when respiration is taking place in lack of oxygen in our muscle cells what is being produced lactic acid is being produced and energy obviously is being produced but lactic acid is produced what is the uh, what does lactic acid do sir lactic acid when it builds up in our muscles it is causing cramps we are not able to smoothly move our body because it is held together by cramps which is caused due to the build up of the lactic acid which is caused because when we are doing heavy sudden physical activity oxygen is not able to reach the muscles there is some oxygen but there is not enough oxygen hence respiration is taking place in the lack of oxygen and during this time what is happening lactic acid is produced which is causing cramps okay sir talk about the last pathway in the presence of oxygen in each and every cell there is mitochondria powerhouse of the cell in the presence of oxygen in each and every cell respiration is happening pyruvate three carbon molecules of pyruvate are converted into three molecules of carbon dioxide three carbon molecules of pyruvate are converted into three molecules of carbon dioxide this is called as aerobic respiration aerobic respiration gives more energy than anaerobic respiration why sir why does aerobic respiration give more energy than anaerobic respiration in aerobic respiration there is oxygen oxygen is a supporter of burning so food burns well to give more energy if you are going to give less less oxygen the food might not burn well when it is not burning well it will automatically give us less energy so aerobic respiration in mitochondria in the present of in the presence of oxygen which gives out carbon dioxide water and energy which gives out carbon dioxide water and energy is the pathway of respiration which is going to give the maximum energy is the pathway of respiration which is going to give the maximum energy okay sir what about anaerobic respiration it is going to give us less energy it is going to give us less energy okay sir okay sir now uh, some energy is released during respiration yes there is that energy stored that particular ener energy is stored in atp molecules sir what is atp molecules 
ATP molecules mean adenosine triphosphate. In order to understand ATP molecules, let's first understand adenosine diphosphate. Okay, ADP or adenosine diphosphate combines with the inorganic phosphate molecule in the presence of energy to form a high energy phosphate bond and this forms ATP molecule. ADP molecule has just two bonds but one more P is added to this and ADP along with another inorganic P and energy forms ATP which is adenosine triphosphate. Then I need to do some work. Let us say I want to work. Let us say I want to do some work. Immediately ATP molecules are breaking using water. The high terminal high energy phosphate bond in ATP molecules. The terminal high energy phosphate bond in ATP molecules are immediately broken. And the, when these terminal high energy bonds in ATP molecules are broken, you are getting ADP. You are getting ADP. Now energy is released. Energy is given to convert ADP to ATP. Energy is stored in ATP. Now you need energy. When you are doing work, ATP is broken. The high, terminal high energy phosphate bond in ATP is broken. ADP is formed. This gives us energy to do each and everything. Fixed amount of energy is released in ATP molecules. 30 kilojoules per mole is released. This energy drives all the endothermic reactions of the cell. Also, ATP molecule is used for not, not just doing uh, our own physical work. Even for work such as nerve impulse conduction, protein synthesis, contraction of each and every one of our muscles. Everything is done from energy that is released when we are breaking the terminal high energy phosphate bond in ATP to form ADP. Yeah. Okay, sir. Because of this ATP is called as energy currency of the cell. Because of this ATP is called as energy currency of the cell. Sir, I am comfortable with respiration. I understand how. Uh, ATP, in ATP molecules energy is stored here are there any important one marks absolutely here uh, how much energy is released when you are breaking ATP 30 kilojoules per mole what else sir yeah, when you are doing respiration in mitochondria how many carbon dioxide molecules are formed because pyruvate contains three carbon molecules this pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide three carbon dioxide molecules are formed for each and every carbon molecule in pyruvate yeah that's basically about respiration sir now kindly teach us about the exchange of oxygen the significance of oxygen in plants and animals okay let me start about plants kindly look at the section of a leaf in a plant in this particular section of a leaf you will be able to see that inside the leaf there are a lot of intercellular spaces so there are large intercellular spaces that keep the cells in a leaf in contact with air. Air will be able to comfortably move inside the stomata and touch all the internal parts of the leaf because the leaf has large intercellular spaces. So carbon dioxide and oxygen are being exchanged constantly by diffusion. The diffusion direction is depends upon the environmental condition and the plant requirement. Okay, sir. How am I supposed to understand this? Let us say during the daytime photosynthesis is taking place. What is happening? Chlorophyll is absorbing sunlight. This light energy is converted into chemical energy. This chemical energy is used to break the water into its two components. The two components of water, oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen is used for reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate. Oxygen is given out. So the byproduct of photosynthesis that is given out is oxygen. During the daytime, when plant is doing photosynthesis, oxygen is constantly given out. So inside the leaf, in the large intercellular spaces inside the leaf, what will be more during the daytime? Oxygen, sir. Why? Because uh, photosynthesis is constantly taking place. So more oxygen will be present inside the leaf because concentration of oxygen is inside the leaf. More oxygen will diffuse outside. The uh, plant will give out oxygen and it will take in carbon dioxide because the concentration of carbon dioxide is greater outside the leaf. The concentration of carbon dioxide is lesser 
inside the leaf things always move from a place of higher concentration to a place of lower concentration so carbon dioxide which is present in higher concentration outside the leaf will move into the leaf because there is very less carbon dioxide because the carbon dioxide inside the leaf is being used for photosynthesis photosynthesis okay sir what about at night in night no photosynthesis is happening in the plant respiration is happening in the plant what is happening during respiration during respiration oxygen is taken in by the plant and it is used to for burning the food and getting energy when you are burning the food obviously carbon dioxide will be produced that carbon dioxide is sent out of the plant that is why uh, old people educated people they say don't sleep under a green tree during the night why during the night the plant the tree is undergoing respiration it will take all the oxygen from the environment and give out carbon dioxide and this is not very healthy for you humans need a good oxygen rich environment for survival okay kana okay kana now are you able to understand this particular part how does oxygen intake take place in plants it takes place through diffusion okay sir what about animals obviously animals have a set of lungs especially all mammals have a set of lungs and using this lungs we are breathing in and out but what about aquatic animals sir very good question uh, with respect to aquatic animals water contains less amount of dissolved oxygen than air let me repeat myself water contains less amount of dissolved oxygen than air okay sir so aquatic animals have a higher rate of breathing aquatic animals rate of breathing is faster than terrestrial animals why sir because the aquatic animals also need the same amount of oxygen has who needs has terrestrial animals need but in water there is less oxygen an aquatic animal also needs a lot of oxygen terrestrial animal also needs a lot of oxygen but the aquatic animal when it is taking oxygen from the water it is noti noticing that less oxygen is dissolved in water and in air more oxygen is dissolved the amount of oxygen dissolved is fairly low in water than in air hence the rate of breathing of aquatic animals is very very high also another thing all respiratory organs are different structures that help to increase the contact surface area with the oxygen rich environment in an oxygen rich environment what does the respiratory organs want to do the respiratory organs want to be in such a way that more contact will be there the respiratory organs will be in such a way that more contact will be there between whom sir between the organ and the environment between the organ and the environment so usually all respiratory organs will be in such a way that they increase the surface area of contact with oxygen rich environment they increase the surface area of contact with oxygen rich environment also all respiratory organs will be highly vascularized what is vascularized they will have a lot of blood vessels connecting them they will have a lot of blood vessels connecting them okay 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 now let us go for the actual respiratory system of human beings okay this is the actual diagram of the respiratory system in human beings here there is a nasal passage here through the nasal passage you are breathing in this is the internal nostrils and once it gets here what is here this is your pharynx this is your larynx the vibrating part of the throat when you are talking it is called as larynx or voice box and this is called as trachea trachea contains a lot of rings of cartilage what is the purpose of rings of cartilage in trachea here the rings of cartilage prevent the trachea from collapsing in case of accidents lungs must always continually get oxygen or else the lungs will simply die in order to ensure the supply of oxygen the trachea is made up of rings of cartilages okay sir how do i understand this okay L listen here this is made up of cartilage our ear lobes are made up of cartilage if i am going to move this ear lobe over here it get back into it gets back into the same position if i am going to move this ear lobe over here it get back into it same place of uh, it get gets back to its original position in a similar way when i am falling down the trachea might slightly squeeze but because it is made up of 
rings of cartilage what does it do it simply opens up so rings of cartilage ensures that the trachea is always open this trachea opens up into two bronchi these two divisions are called as bronchi the bronchi opens to form bronchioles the bronchioles end in alveoli and the alveoli is in good contact with the blood the alveoli is in good contact with the blood alveoli are balloon like structures and i have drawn the structure of an alveoli over here i have drawn the structure of an alveoli over here it contains a lot of vascularized branches with a lot of balloon like shapes it contains a lot of vascularized structures with a lot of balloon like shapes okay sir now what is happening give a deeper explanation when air is taken through the nostrils when you are taking in air through the nostrils what is happening uh, filtering is happening all the dust particles are filtered by the fine hair and the mucus lining in the nasal passage then the air is passing through the throat and divides into the two bronchi it passes into the lungs which are vascularized bags vascularized bags means they have a lot of blood vessels the rings of cartilage in the throat prevent the collapse of the air passage obviously this air passage will always be open it needs to be open that is ensured by the rings of cartilage in the trachea that is ensured by the rings of cartilage in the trachea okay sir within these lungs what is happening the passage is dividing into smaller tubes this ends in alveoli this passage bronchi divides into bronchioli bronchioles which end at alveoli and this alveoli wall contain extensive network of blood vessels there are a lot of blood vessels here in this surface exchange of gases takes place how does exchange of gases takes place okay let me give you an idea in complex organisms such as humans there are always a separate respiratory pigment in humans the respiratory pigment is hemoglobin hemoglobin has a very high affinity for oxygen hemoglobin loves oxygen so when blood comes here an oxygen blood comes here an oxygen comes from the external environment hemoglobin grabs the oxygen and goes around the body hemoglobin grabs the oxygen and goes around the body when it goes around the body the oxygen is used for respiration when respiration is happening carbon dioxide is evolved this carbon dioxide is easily dissolved in water so look at the funda blood is basically 55 percentage water blood is basically 55 percentage plasma which is in fact water so the carbon dioxide that is released during respiration gets dissolved in blood and get uh, slowly it comes back to the lungs slowly it comes back to the lungs let me repeat once more how the transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide is happening here hemoglobin has a very high affinity for oxygen blood is red in color because in fact hemoglobin is red in color yeah okay so this hemoglobin will grab oxygen from the lungs and it will go around the body it will give oxygen wherever the body needs to respire then what will happen the respiration will take place carbon dioxide will be given out this carbon dioxide will be taken by the blood back to the lungs why is carbon dioxide being taken by the blood because carbon dioxide can easily dissolve in water blood is 55 percentage plasma which is basically water are you able to understand how the cyclic uh, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is happening yeah okay kanna let us go for the process of breathing the process of breathing contains two steps inhalation and exhalation what is inhalation inhalation is breathing of air breathing in of air when you are breathing in the ribs are automatically pushed out lifting of ribs the diaphragm this particular muscle which is pulling the lungs down when you are breathing in air is called as diaphragm initially the diaphragm will be like this this is the relaxed position of the diaphragm this is the relaxed position of the diaphragm when you are breathing in your ribs will lift diaphragm will flatten so when i am breathing in my ribs will lift my diaphragm will flatten okay this produces an enlarged chest cavity air is sucked into the lungs and this air is filled the, by the alveoli what about exhalation in exhalation air is being breathed out the ribs are being pulled inside 
the diaphragm is relaxing the ribs are being pulled inside what is happening to the diaphragm the diaphragm is relaxing a smaller chest cavity is being produced when i am breathing out <laughs> what is happening the ribs are being pulled inside the diaphragm is relaxing automatically the ribs are being pulled inside the diaphragm is relaxing the ribs are being pulled inside the diaphragm is relaxing automatically we are getting a very small chest cavity air is being pushed out okay at alveoli blood is bringing carbon dioxide from the rest of the body and releasing it oxygen from alveolar air is taken up by the blood due to the presence of hemoglobin which has very high affinity for oxygen and it is transmitted throughout the body okay sir let me ask you a question what is residual volume of air okay let us take a balloon and suck all the air out of the balloon what will happen the balloon will collapse yes literally our lungs can be uh, compared to a balloon if all the air is taken out of the lungs our lungs will break apart our lungs will collapse this must never happen so what has nature done nature always contains uh, nature has given a uh, property to the lung such that always lungs contain some amount of air even when we are breathing in even when we are breathing out lungs will always contain some amount of air this is called as residual volume of air the residual volume of air means the air that is contained the air that is always contained by the lungs during both inhalation and exhalation the air which is always contained by the lungs during both inhalation and exhalation is called as residual volume of air this prevents lung collapsing and gives sufficient time for oxygen to be absorbed and carbon dioxide to be released in the alveoli okay sir okay sir now uh, that's basically how respiration is being done in higher organisms another important one more question is what is the respiratory pigment in human beings hemoglobin in fact uh, if you do not have enough hemoglobin that in fact is a disease because not enough oxygen will reach all the cells of your body yeah that's basically the end of this lecture hope you guys enjoy this lecture if you like our lecture obviously subscribe to our channel like our uh, videos uh, recommend our channel and videos to your friends we are going to have so much fun learning biology physics and chemistry together cheers and thank you